it's Michelle and I've got such a fun bead charm for you guys today. This one is absolutely my most favorite so far. I just love it. We're going to be doing a hummingbird feeder and I had so much fun coming up with this. I've been waiting on different supplies to come along to finish what I needed to make this and I've been so anxious waiting for those to arrive and I finally received everything and I'm ready to make a hummingbird feeder bead charm. This is going to be absolutely the cutest thing, you guys. I can't wait to get it put together and show you. And I came up with this idea looking at my hummingbird feeder that is on my front porch. And this one is going to end up kind of looking like that one because I went by it to come up with my idea for beads. And there are some different shaped ones out there and you can definitely use different shaped beads the body of the hummingbird feeder that holds the liquid is just going to be a straight cylinder bead because that's what my hummingbird feeder looks like but they have very curvy shaped ones maybe you could use a large teardrop bead turned upside down or something like that i think that would be absolutely gorgeous but like i said i did this by looking at mine so i'm using the cylinder bead today and the one I have today measures 9 millimeters wide by 15 millimeters tall. And this just came from a glass bead mix that I bought at Walmart years ago. And maybe you guys can find these in your local craft store. Just sold individually or in with a mix the way that I did. I wasn't able to find a link for something similar online. So just look in your local craft stores and see what you can come up with or like I said before just use maybe a teardrop upside down for a more shapely hummingbird feeder. I'm going to top mine with a red glass disc bead and that one measures at nine millimeters wide also by about four millimeters thick and the cylinder and the disc are glass beads, but my flower bead here that's going to be the bottom. This is going to be like the bottom part that the hummingbirds drink out of, and I'm using an acrylic flower bead for that. But I was able to find a clear red acrylic, so it matches really well with the red glass. And when we get that put together, you won't be able to tell. And for even more whimsy, I thought I would hang it from a black chain, just like the one on my front porch is hanging from a black chain. So I just cut a length of chain down to just a half of an inch, and I've got two black jump rings and a black lobster clasp. And you guys can attach this to a pendant bell if you want to, to put that on a necklace or ear wires. As with every bead charm, you can turn it into any piece of jewelry that you choose. but. I usually use lobster clasps anyway, just for demonstration on all of my bead charms. But in this case especially, I thought the lobster clasp was really cute because it looks sort of like those S-hooks that the hummingbird feeders hang from also. And I'm going to add some really fine detail to this on each little flower petal I'm going to put where the drinking port would be on a regular hummingbird feeder. Those are usually little yellow flowers that are on those. So I decided to use some little yellow rhinestones and these were sold as nail art for fingernails and I thought that would be really really cute. I decided to go with just these little round yellow rhinestones to put on each one of those petals because they were the size that I needed. These are only one and a half millimeters so they're very tiny and I think that's going to work out perfectly. I do have a couple of different options that I had ordered just to try and I'll go ahead and show you guys those and I'll include links to all of them too in case you guys want to use some of the other options. I have some more nail art rhinestones here in a flower shape and that's really what I wanted to go with. But these are a little bit larger. 
they're still very tiny nail art stones but these are three millimeters in size and that was actually pretty large as it relates to my little flower over there so I'll just put that over on there to show you guys the size difference of that and if you can't get the little one and a half millimeter round ones then these would definitely still work because you can see it does fit on my little petal shape there and they're about three millimeters so you can use those if you want to that's a good option I also ordered some nail art sequins and there is a mixture in here of teardrops hearts flowers stars lots of different shapes in there and the flower shapes I don't think it's going to focus to show you guys those tiny flowers but they are about three millimeters also about the size of the flower shaped nail art stones and you could use any one of those options or you could use tiny little sequins or tiny seed beads you could even just take a dotting tool and apply a little dot of yellow paint either from a paint pen or fingernail polish whatever you want to do to put a little yellow dot on there but if you do go with the paint then I suggest you maybe coat over it after it dries with a coat of Mod Podge or something to keep that from rubbing off so let's start putting this feeder together the first thing that I want to do is to get my little rhinestones on this flower bead and what I've got here is some E6000 you could also use that Loctite gel that I often use for jewelry pieces but I was out of that so we're going with the E6000 today I've got a little notepad here I'm going to flip that open I love to use little notepads for little scrap things like this that way all I have to do is tear off one dirty page or flip it over and that's the only mess I have and if you guys can see I don't know if the camera will focus that closely but right about here at the center of each of these is a little dimple just a little spot that I think is going to be perfect for nestling my little rhinestones in there so I'm just going to take a toothpick and dip it into my E6000 actually that seems a little thick that part close to the tip may be starting to dry out on me so I'm going to get a new blob from a little farther back in the tube okay so I'm going to hold my flower dip into that E6000 with my toothpick and I just want to put one little dot on each petal then just take my little jewelry picker or jewel picker I guess I should say and I'm going to get one little yellow stone and put that into my little blob of glue And I think that is just adorable. Whoop. 
stamps. Be careful not to lose my jewels before that glue sets up. And I'm just going to make sure those are exactly in the spot that I want them and press down firmly with my finger. And there are my little hummingbird drinking ports. I think that is so cute. I would have loved to have used the little flower shapes, but I like this size much better. I think that's so cute. Okay, I'm getting my little notepad out of the way and my jewels. And we can start assembling our hummingbird feeder. Now keep in mind that that glue is still not completely set. So be careful. You may want to let it dry completely before you continue. Or just be very careful not to touch those and move them out of position. So I'm just going to put that onto my head pin with my little yellow ports facing upward and if you guys use these I don't know if you noticed the little indention inside the flower is facing up and the little part that curves outward is toward the bottom and that's very important for nesting the cylinder bead into and with the flower beads and the disc beads I was able to find something very very similar online that I will give you links to they're actually just exactly like this but they're more of a cloudy transparent red than the shiny clear but they are the same shape and size so that will work out for you or maybe you guys can find something closer to this locally so now I'm going to put on my cylinder bead and look at that. I just love that, you guys. This is really my favorite thing so far. Now my disc bead as the topper. And I will include a photo of my hummingbird feeder on my front porch that was the inspiration for this to show you guys. And maybe you can look at your hummingbird feeders or some that you've seen around that you can sort of mimic the shapes that you see in it. So I'm going to hold that all firmly together. Try not to let anything slide around on me and I don't want to touch those yellow stones just yet. I'm going to bend my head pin over at a 90 degree angle. And this one is way longer than I need. I'm using a 3 inch here and you don't need that at all. I'm not even making jump rings from my excess because I'm using the black today. But I chose this one because it was the one that I had in bright silver. And being able to see the head pin through the clear bead, I didn't want anything that would make it dingy. So I'm going to cut that down to about a quarter of an inch. And then roll it into a loop with my round nose pliers. I think that is so stinking cute. So now I'm going to take my black jump rings. And you guys don't have to do this part. You can just attach a jump ring and lobster clasp in silver or whatever color you choose. But as long as I was going whimsical, I thought I would just go all out and mimic the chain and everything about my hummingbird feeder. Okay, so I just opened that up using a couple pairs of chain nose pliers. And I'm going to dangle on, whoops, hold on to that a little bit better. And dangle on my hummingbird feeder. And one end of my chain 
and you do want to find a chain if you're doing this part that has very tiny lengths because with the scale of the feeder you don't want something that's going to look too bulky. Okay. So now I'm going to open up my other jump ring. And I'm going to put that through the other end of my chain. If I can get that tiny little link on there. It's a little tedious, but I think it's worth it. And then my lobster clasp to mimic the look of my S hook. And then I'm just going to close that jump ring back up. Okay, so I think I decided to make one small change. Even though I did use small jump rings, they look very large along with all of the other components in this. So this bottom one, I think I'm going to take it out and just hook that chain directly onto the loop I made with my head pin and see how that works out for us. Take that off and then I can just get a hold of the loop there on my head pin and just twist that back. Remove that jump ring there and then just put my last link of my chain directly onto the loop in my head pin and make sure that closes back completely and I think I do like that much better so like I said, you guys can use this as any piece of jewelry that you choose, whether it be a necklace pendant or earrings or a charm on a bracelet or a charm to hang from your key ring or your purse or your rear view mirror. There really are endless options that you can use these bead charms for. But if you don't want to use it as jewelry at all, you can use it as a miniature for doll houses or fairy gardens or whatever type of miniatures you like to collect, I think I'm going to use mine in my little fairy garden shelf that I have here in my craft room. And I think this is just adorable. So you guys, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know if you like my little hummingbird feeder. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. This is just my favorite and I really had so much fun. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page. And be sure to join our Facebook group, Crafty Minds. Also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. And don't forget to visit my blog. I'll put the links to all of those in the description below, so be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.